All right, welcome back from coffee and lunch. Um, so I will try and keep it light and entertaining, but uh, I'm gonna basically share uh, some stories with pictures from airlift from the 22-23 uh, season. And as you can see, I'm not alone on the slide, so my co-conspirators, uh, Matt Filipowski, Gianluca Fezani bianchi and Simon Trotter, if uh, any hard questions come up at the end, that's what they're here for. So with that said, this is the busiest slide I have. So lots of words here. Uh, it's basically all the stats, and this will be in the, the brief that goes out to everyone afterwards. But lots of stats here. Promise it's the busiest slide. But the thing I want you to focus on is the uh, line going from North America down to New Zealand on the left-hand side of the globe. So that's a 16 and a half hour um, airlift mission if we have something that breaks uh, to get down to fix our aircraft. So a winning combo in Antarctica um, is a bit of chance, right? So you need three things. You need a fully mission-capable aircraft, you need a serviceable runway, and relatively good weather. Um, so with that said, we had a plan going in, which is a C-17 and a 757 um, to start the, start the season with. And so we pulled the lever on the slot machine, and um, it came back with uh, better luck next time. So. Um, as it would have it, that uh, C-17 and that 757 were broken. Uh, the C-17 flew one mission and then was down for 19 days. Uh, and the 757 was down for several weeks as well. So what do you do in that situation if you have to execute and you don't have any airplanes? You phone a friend. So um, I picked up the phone and I called my friend Matt Filipowski. And uh, within 48 hours... Uh, A319 was sitting out there in Christchurch, and I rode that one uh, as the first NSF rep in that year. And so that was uh, how we opened the season. As our, that was our people mover, was a borrowed aircraft. Um, so we got people moving. What do we need to do next? We need to move cargo. So the Italian Air Force C-130 J-30 started moving cargo. And why is it sitting at Phoenix Airfield? Why did, it sit at, why did it run 12 missions to Phoenix Airfield? Well, that's because there was no ice runway at Terranova Bay. So that's a picture I took as we flew by, comfortable in the A319, past Terranova Bay. We got um, John Lucas' party in, the Mario Zucchelli opening crew in, um, just in time to meet up with their Basler and off to Mario Zucchelli to open the station for other follow-on teams that would be coming through. So on the small fixed wing aircraft note, how quickly do small fixed wing aircraft move from Chile to Rothra to multiple points um, on Antarctica? Is it four days? I don't know, P pick a card, it could be 10 days. Um, in this case, we had, um, f in exchange for that A319 I mentioned, um, we pre-positioned AAD uh, Wilkins opening crew um, at McMurdo and um, several weeks later, uh, due to those, pull that card. How many days? Uh, it got, the plane got stuck. JKB, the Basler, got stuck at South Pole due to weather. And so um, eventually, we got uh, JKB in, and uh, the AAD team went out and got in and went to start it, and there was nothing, nothing happened. So um, what do you do? Matt needed an ignition coil of some type. There was one on the continent, John Luca had it, and sent it over to McMurdo and fixed JKB and off to Casey Station goes uh, JKB, only to find. Um, so in the top left picture, that was the way they had prepped uh, Wilkins Field for the upcoming season. Down on the left, dropping in supplies to keep things going. And then when they arrived on JKB, they found the two pictures on the right. And so, after a month plus of work, they got a limited capability runway on the left. And after months more work, they got a fully functioning runway on the right. Okay, so we got airlift. Uh, we're, you know, halfway through the season with airlift. COVID hits McMurdo. So um, started with a few cases and then more cases and so basically, we had isolation facilities, which you see there, um, Hotel California, and, um, 
an MMI, Mammoth Mountain Inn. Uh, so those were set aside. We started isolating people and ran out of room. And so the agency, the um, foundation said, two week pause, no more people into McMurdo. Um, well, that's a problem. So now they're all stuck in Christchurch. But foreign programs could move through. So the French program, the Korean program, the Italian program continued to move through. But here's where the logistics get challenging on that. There's no space, as I showed you. So weather had to be perfect. Everything had to work right for them literally to get off one airplane and get on another and continue on their journey. OK, all of that was easy, right? So now we have a head of state coming through. We have the prime minister from New Zealand coming through. Um, everything was set perfect. And uh, the prime minister gets on a New Zealand Air Force C-130. Off they go, hit weather en route, do a U-turn, go back to Christchurch. Um, we had a C-17 mission the next morning. Let's put her on the C-17. Well, you have to call back to Washington, D.C. to do that. You, have, you can't just put the prime minister on there. So uh, basically I had from midnight till 9 a.m. the next morning to figure out how to get that permission. And it came through with about two hours to spare. Off the prime minister goes, great visit to McMurdo. Uh, it's time to go home. Uh, the New Zealand Air Force pre-positioned to C-130 at McMurdo. Um, but the picture on the right is the Italian Air Force. So she came back from McMurdo on an Italian Air Force C-130. Um, whereas I took all night to get permission, John Luca got it in about 20 minutes. So, and that was at midnight too. So he has his way of getting answers. Um, so I mentioned the C-130 was staged at McMurdo. So... Um, the, this, the airplane got there about a day ahead of the Prime Minister coming back, and everyone knows Antarctica gets a vote. So the, one of the props, um, oh, the word escapes me, um, delamination of one of the props, um, it was a no-go. So they had to get um, a maintenance team in, a new prop, and prop change on the ice. So as you can see, a crane, a maintenance shelter, all the stuff that goes with it. The Kiwis got it fixed, and off they went. Back to Christchurch. We get the LC-130s in, so these are not new either. The, the oldest one is a, like a 1973. The newest one's in 1993. They've rebuilt, been rebuilt more times than you can count. Um, but I mentioned that pause. So there was nothing to do. We had them there. There's no people to send out to waste camp and open it. There's no one to take to poll. So we ran a few missions uh, to poll, like fuel missions and cargo missions. Eventually, we get the people in. And um, we had maintenance failures. So these aircraft never want to spend anywhere on the continent other than McMurdo. But they spent the night at Waste Camp and South Pole multiple times this year, which is never a good thing. And a positive note, um, some of you saw this in the SAR presentation John Luca gave. But this is their C-130 landing a proof of concept on their Boulder runway for the first time ever. So this is a valuable asset in the region as a divert, if anything else, if not anything else, uh, for other aircraft flying in the area. Ending the season on a strong note. So C-17 and 757 broke up front, but at the end, all of February, no maintenance issues for either one. They closed out the season, um, and then the C-17 ran uh, a mission in May and with night vision goggles, and the 757 ran a mission in March as well. And then Trotz showed this picture uh, during the uh, SAR conference as well. But this is uh, July 2021, um, and we almost did it again recently here, um, but didn't. But the, the Kiwi Air Force landed for the first time with night vision goggles in the middle of winter to not get a Kiwi patient out, but to get a U.S. Uh, Antarctic program patient out. So in the end, um, airlift is challenging to support science in Antarctica, but it's all about the friends and the network you have and collaboration to make things happen. So that's it.